In your headlines, RTCIPF Commissioner's latest statement on crime, and yet another murder took place in the CCI. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to PTV Newswatch. Thanks for tuning in on this Thursday, October 27th, 2022. I'm Khalees Williams with today's newscast. The real news starts now. On Wednesday, the Commissioner of Police released a statement on crime, hours before tragedy struck in the TCI again. Commissioner of Police Trevor Bodding addressed the nation yet again on matters concerning crime, updating the public on the policing activities that were underway in the past week. Policing operations have been undertaken by teams comprising of officers from the Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force and our colleagues from the Royal Bahamas Police. The commissioner expressed his gratitude for the assistance given through the Royal Bahamas Police Force. I remain grateful to the Commissioner of Police for the Royal Bahamas Police Force, Mr Clayton Fernanda, and the Bahamian government for their continued support to the Turks and Caicos Islands. Commissioner Bodding then warned criminals that police operations will not be ending anytime soon. If you're involved in crime, don't think our operations are ending anytime soon. If you have a family member involved in crime, expect officers to be at your door. Expect them to be in your house. Criminals cannot hide amongst family and families cannot hide criminals. He spoke about how our borders are being protected. Officers on the ground continue to be supported through our aerial colleagues from US law enforcement and the United Kingdom Royal Navy Wildcat helicopter. These support mechanisms are protecting the border of the TCI, which includes the routes frequented by criminals traversing the TCI by illegally entering. And support for investigations was the next thing the commissioner discussed. In terms of investigation, it is expected that a large number of investigators will be arriving from the UK and funded by the United Kingdom government. These officers will support our local investigation teams ensuring the results of their hard work is supported by robust and thorough investigations, thereby causing criminals to face the full force of the law. Commissioner Bodding gave a summary of the operations conducted by the RTCIPF in the past 10 days. 205 vehicles have been checked, numerous fixed penalty tickets issued, illegal tints removed from 23 vehicles, 20 drug searches, eight persons detained under immigration legislation, four warrants executed in relation to searches for firearms, two firearms and ammunition have been seized. Large quantities of drugs have been seized, including cannabis, cocaine and amphetamine. Seven people have been arrested for drugs and firearms offences, and laptops and cell phones have been seized for examination. A joint police and immigration operation resulted in the de detention of 21 people believed to be working illegally. The commissioner spoke about two other criminal activities that are currently being investigated. A report was made of an attempted robbery in the South Dock area. The people involved escaped from the suspects without being robbed or harmed, and this is under investigation. Additionally this week, the Royal Turks and Caicos Islands Police Force is also investigating a shooting incident in Town, which resulted in one man being injured. The circumstances of this incident are not yet clear. Commissioner Bodding spoke about the recent gun amnesty program. You'll be aware the recent gun amnesty has concluded. No weapons were surrendered, which is disappointing. However, the amnesty provided people with a route to hand over illegal weapons without any threat of prosecution. That opportunity has now passed. Any person found in possession of a firearm will now face the full force of the sentencing powers of our judges. He then spoke about the bill passed for increasing sentences for possession of firearms. The House of Assembly last week passed various national security legislation to deter criminals by increasing sentences for persons found in possession of firearms and ammunition and aid the police in the force of its duties. Criminals, should you be in possession of a firearm ammunition in the TCI, there's a high percentage you will spend a large part of your life jailed. 
The commissioner said that the RTCIPF intended to keep crime as low as it has been for the past 10 days, which unfortunately did not come to pass, as a murder was reported only six hours later. We'll be right back with more News Watch when we return. Why advertised with PTV? People's Television Network is the only locally owned homegrown television network that has nationwide coverage across the Turks and Caicos Islands and is the home of PTV News Watch, the leading local news program. PTV News Watch is viewed every night from Monday to Friday and is broadcast nationwide. News is shown every day at 6.30 p.m., 9 p.m., and then again the next day. Get all time slots for maximum exposure. Spotlight is an airtime slot dedicated for informative videos, announcement of events, as well as birthday greetings and funeral services. Overall, PTV can provide a great platform to launch, promote, and retain your brand, product, or services to the entire country. We will be your partner ensuring you will achieve your full potential and to make the Turks and Caicos Islands the greatest little nation in the Caribbean and in the world. After a mostly quiet two weeks following the September murder spree that shook residents to the core, a double shooting has resulted in the death of yet another young man. Newswatch with that report. Those are the cries of a mother helplessly looking over her son as he lay lifeless on the cold, hard ground. Mere hours after a press statement by Commissioner of Police Trevor Bodding updating the public on the joint operations between officers of the RTCI and Royal Bahamas Police Forces and how those works have resulted in a quiet last two weeks, the country records yet another murder. The island of Providenciales finally seemed to have found some resolve to the spree of heinous, gruesome murders to have taken place within the last two months, and residents were starting to feel a missed sense of security. Then, tragedy struck once again. Two young men gunned down, one killed, the other seriously injured. We learned that the man killed was no stranger to law enforcement. 29-year-old Paul Mizek, a resident of the Bight, was wanted for a number of offenses over the years. According to police, around 6 p.m. on Wednesday, October 26, the police control room received a number of calls reporting a shooting on the Leeward Highway past the Monica's Bar building. They arrived on scene to find one man conscious but seriously wounded with a gunshot wound to his left side lying on the highway median. A few a few yards down, another man, dead with visible gunshot wounds to his face. Police are asking anyone with information to call 911 or Crime Stoppers to leave tips anonymously at 1-800-8477. Don't move just yet. Coming up next is your weather forecast after this break. weather forecast for October 28th, 2022 for the nation's capital, Grand Turk, partly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For South Caicos, mostly sunny skies, high 84, low 79, winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, mainly sunny skies, high 84, low 78, winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 78, winds light and variable. 
and on Providencialis, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 78, winds light and variable. Here's your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, 6.50 a.m. Sunset, 6.14 p.m. Now for your high and low tides. High tides, 10.12 a.m., 10.35 p.m. Low tides, 3.44 a.m., 4.37 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic, Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, an area of low pressure is expected to form over the Eastern Caribbean Sea this weekend, possibly related to the southern portion of an existing trough of low pressure over the area. Thereafter, environmental conditions are forecast to be conducive for gradual development, and a tropical depression could form early next week, while the disturbance moves generally westward or west-northwestward into the Central Caribbean Sea. That's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. That's the end of today's edition of Newswatch, but don't forget you can always catch us on our website at www.ptv8tci.com and every weekday right here at 6.30pm. I'm Kalise Williams, stay informed, thanks for watching.